Hello everyone out there and welcome to this video where I am going to talk about the Bible. I really look forward to this. In this video we are going to cover five different things. First, we are going to look at that there is not eternal life in the Bible. But, and I am going to explain what that but is. Number two, how the Bible become alive to us. Number three, how to handle and rightly divide the word of God. Number four, how to meditate on the word of God in a biblical way and not like Eastern religion and New Age. Number five, how the word of God can transform your life. We start with the first one. There is not eternal life in the Bible. Jesus is saying that. In John 5, he talked to the Pharisees and he said to them, you study the scripture carefully. Because you think that in them you have eternal life. Yea, they testify about me, but you are not willing to come to me to have life. I want to say that there is not eternal life in this word. You don't find eternal life in the word alone. But the word are testifying about Jesus. So you, so we may come to him to get life. If you read the word, if you study the word, and this don't bring you to Jesus to get life, then something is wrong. So um, I want to say Jesus is the one who gives life. There is not life in this. But it don't mean that the Bible is just a book like other books out there. And this leads us to point number two. How the Bible become alive to us. In Luke chapter 24, we read about how Jesus came and met some disciples on the way to Emmaus. There was two disciples who was walking on the way to Emmaus. Jesus had just rose up again. And there Jesus came and walked beside them. And they talked with Jesus not knowing that it was actually Jesus who was walking there. It was first when Jesus came with them home and Jesus broke the, broke the bread that they saw that it was actually Jesus. And we read this in verse 30. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes was opened and they recognized him and he disappeared from their sight. Then they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened scripture to us? When Jesus there walked with them, we read that, yes, even they did not know it was Jesus, he still opened scripture to them and it was burning inside their heart. The same we can experience today when we walk with Jesus. When the Holy Spirit is there, we can experience how the Holy Spirit is opening Scripture to us in a way that is burning inside of us. So you need the Holy Spirit to really understand this. In John 16 verse 7, Jesus said this, I tell you the truth, it's the best for you that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And Jesus continues, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will speak not on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. The Holy Spirit is here to teach us the truth. The Holy Spirit is here to remind us of everything Jesus is saying, and how do he do that? He often do it by the word. He makes the word alive. He opened the word to us in a way that is burning inside of us as we read in Luke 
chapter 24. But the Bible without the Holy Spirit is in many ways a book, like many other books. But when the Holy Spirit is there, when he's there to open the scripture, when he's there to remind us, to teach us, then the Bible is an amazing book like no other book. I have met many people out there who have been studying the word for years, but then the Holy Spirit come into their life. And suddenly it's like reading the word for the first time. I remember first time I picked up the Bible after I received the Holy Spirit and I started to read it. It was like I understood it. It was burning inside of me. This became a life. Another thing we just read before was Jesus, he said, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. But when the Spirit of truth come, he will guide you to all truth. So there was actually many things Jesus wanted to say when he was on earth, but he didn't because they could not understand it. And that lead me to the third point. How to rightly divide the word of God. We need to know how to handle and rightly divide the word of God to understand it. Otherwise, people can go really wrong with this word. For example, when Jesus was here on earth, he talked with his disciples, he walked with his disciples, but there was things he couldn't explain or could not explain in a way that they could understand it. For example, the cross. They didn't understand why Jesus needed to go to the cross. That was why even in the Garden of Gethsemane, they tried to speak him away, talk him away from going to the cross. So there's many things they did not fully understand with the cross, with how Jesus needed to die and how he rose again. Yeah, even after he rose again, they didn't understand it. We read that when Jesus walked here on earth, there was also things he could not do. He could, for example, not baptize people in water. He could not baptize people with the Holy Spirit. That's why we see that the robber on the cross did not get baptized in water. It was first after the cross we got the baptism to Christ. This is why Jesus is saying this after the cross in Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Jesus was not able to say that before the cross. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. But after the cross, he could say it. Before the cross, Jesus, he was preaching, repent, repent and believe. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. But after the cross, the kingdom of God is here. So now we came a little closer to the new covenant when Jesus said, repent and be baptized. So that is why the robber on the cross did not get baptized or anyone else before the cross. And that's why after the cross, everyone got baptized. So in 2 Timothy 2.15, we read this. Do you best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth? Or another place is say that rightly divide the word of truth. So we need to handle and divide the word correctly. So we need to Understand when is the Old Testament, when is it the New Testament, when is it before the cross, when is it after the cross. We also need to understand who is Jesus talking to when we, are, for example, read in the Gospels. In Matthew 8, we read that Jesus said this to somebody who got healed by leprosy. He said, See that you don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. We cannot say that today. We should not go around to say to people today, hey, don't, don't tell anyone, but go, go to the priest and give the offer Moses have commanded. Why? Because we are not 
under the law of Moses today as the people at the time of Jesus he was speaking to. So we need to learn to divide the word correctly. We also need to be careful with verses taken out of context. Remember the Bible was written in whole chapters, or sorry, whole letters without chapter and verses. And what's more about in that in our online Pioneer School lesson 23 and 24. The next I want to talk about is how to meditate on the word. Just where one eight is saying this, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. We need to meditate on this word day and night. When we use the word meditate, I want to say it's not like we see in yoga with mantra and new age and all of that where people empty their mind. This is what people do when they meditate in Eastern religion. They empty their mind. But the biblical way of meditate is to fill up your mind, not to empty it. To take the word of God, think of it. Imagine what the word is saying, understand it, and even speak it out loud. Yeah, by speaking the word out, we are actually meditating on the word. Romans 10, 17 is saying this, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Do you need faith in your life? Then the word, faith is coming by the word. Do you need to know the will of God for your life? Again, the word. The word, the word, the word. Romans 12, 2 is saying that we should not be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So we will know, or so we will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good pleasing and perfect will. So it's by the word of God, by meditating on the word of God, by thinking of the word of God, by speaking it loud, that we experience faith. It's by meditating, speaking the word out, that we renew our mind, that we get to know what the will of God is. And it's really amazing to understand that God has given us this word to show who he is. I can come with an example. If we take John 14, 12 and forward and read, the Bible is saying this. Truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these he will do. Because I... I'm going to the Father. Whoever asks in my name, this will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is a text for the Bible. You can read that text and you can move on. But you can also read that text and really take time. We will do greater works than him. We will do the same works. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask me, if you ask me anything, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. If you ask me anything, I will do it. If you take the word, God, if you ask me every. Anything I will do with God, nothing is impossible for you. Nothing is impossible for those who believe. We should do the same work, even greater. If you take the word and, and speak it out, it, it changes you. Let's talk about worrying. There's so many people who are worrying a lot out there. Take Matthew, for example, chapter 
6. You can read Jesus saying this. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yea, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? If you take a text like this, and then think of it, meditate on it. Don't worry. Don't worry. Jesus has commanded us not to worry. Why, Why do I go around worry? Look at the birds. Look at the birds. Think over it. Fill your mind with it. For example, if, if you're worrying, there's so much to worry about. What about this? What about this? What I often do, I, I go for a walk, and then I take the word. What Jesus is saying, do not worry. Come on, look at the birds. Look at the birds. And then I look at the birds. And I'm taking the word and, and do what Jesus has saying. And I'm looking at the birds and, and see that the birds are not worrying. They're not thinking about the day tomorrow and the future and so on. And, and if God takes care of the birds, how much more will he not take care of us? And by doing this, by taking the word and meditating on the word, suddenly you feel that those worries you had just lift up. And this is what we need to do with the word. Not just read it and then move on, but read it, meditate on it. Keep in our mind day and night. And if we do this, God is going to bless us. We will have a successful life, as the Bible says. So remember this next time you worry, look at the birds. Let's move on to number five, the fifth point. How to be transformed by the word of God. We read that the word became alive through Jesus Christ. John 1, 1 is saying this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And then verse 14, the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that is Jesus Christ. So the Word became alive through Jesus Christ. The same way this word now should become alive in us or through us. And there is not enough that you read this word. It's actually not enough that you read it and believe it. You need to act on it. You need to act, act on the word. It needs to be alive in you. James chapter 1 is saying this. Do not only listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the words but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror. And after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgot what he looks like. But whoever look into the perfect law that gives freedom and continue in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. And I want to say this is very, very, very important what we just read here. We read here in the beginning that do not only listen to this word, or I would say do not only read this word, because you can deceive yourself if you only listen and only read it. Why? Because it don't have any transformation in your life. If you only read it, if you only listen to it and do not do it, you are like a man who are looking in a mirror, but as soon as you go away, 
You have forgotten it. It don't have any transformation in your life. And this is what we sadly enough see see all over the world today. The Christian go to church Sunday after Sunday, hearing the word of God, but as soon as they leave that church, they have forgotten what they heard. And by this, we are deceiving ourselves. But if you take the word, the perfect law, the word of God, and are not a forgetful here, but do what the word is saying, you will be blessed in what you do. Or let's say like that, you will be transformed by what you do. The Bible is not only to be read. The Bible is to be obeyed. And it's when we start to not only read it or meditate on it, but when we start to obey it, that is where the transformation is really happening. So I want to say this book is an amazing book. And I encourage you to understand it. To read it. I encourage you first of all to get the Holy Spirit. Repent, get born again, receive the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit, then ask God to help you to rightly divide the word, understand the word, start to read it, start to meditate on it, start to speak it out loud, start to see how the word be create faith in your life. And then obey what you read. And when you do that, I guarantee you this is going to transform your life as you have been transforming many other people all over the world. So God bless you from here. I hope this would help you. If you want more teaching, uh, I have a few teaching on the online Pioneer School. That is a free online school, uh, Bible school we have where you can go in and see more videos where I also talk about the Bible and many other things. God bless you out there.